Hi, uh, my name is Carolina and uh, welcome to Purple Valley Yoga Center, beautiful Purple Valley Yoga mm -hmm. Center. We are sitting here in the garden together with Jelena Vjesic. 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 <laughs> Perhaps I will manage <laughs> one day. Yes, Vjesic, okay. Jelena Vjesic, who is here teaching together, teaching together with David Robson yes. for the fourth time now, fourth, fourth time. year. Mm -hmm. They usually come, excited. yeah. They usually come every March. Yeah, like around this time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So they it will be here. It always gets this hot. <laughs> yeah, and they will be here next year as well, in case yes. you would like to come and practice. Yes. And uh, we have now been working us through the third series arm balances. Yes. Uh, yes. Where Yelena is uh, demonstrating how to do them, and I'm trying to follow. Yes. <laughs> Not as graceful as Yelena, but perhaps one day. Though we agreed that it would be the other way around. Exactly. Yes, uh, <laughs> and now we have reached the uh, Ekapada Bakasana, mm -hmm. A and B. Yeah. So we're going to do two uh, postures. Yeah. Do you have any preparation postures that you would recommend? Not actually, not only for Ekapada Bakasana, but perhaps also for Galavasana, um, Kukutasana, something that can build up strength. It's the vinyasas. Only the vinyasas. Only the vinyasas. And I really strongly believe in the, you know, if you do the practice the way it's meant to be and you do the poses as they're given out one by one and you take time, that that's how you build strength. Yeah. Um, when you get stuck, you're not stuck. You're just learning. So it's okay to take time and have that, whatever is the pose, whether it's primary series or third series, let that be the pose you're working on. You're not stuck. You're just trying to teach your body and your mind mm. what you have to do. And in taking that time, this is where you build all those things, the strength and patience and compassion, and, you know. And so, but, so that is one. But before that, we all have all of these vinyasas that we're constantly doing. So if you can clue into the foundations of doing a proper chaturanga, of really trying to lift up and jump back, it doesn't matter if you float back or not that's you know actually once you learn to float back and through like that then it's easy but the process of learning it being stuck or having that one foot touch that's actually much much harder than you know the the full version so working with that is what builds the strength and then eventually when you learn these poses you would never be you were never taught all of them at once you're given one pose and then you work on it, and then when it's kind of okay, doesn't need to be perfect, you move on. Mm -hmm. So I say always take time with your foundations. Really give vinyasa, pay attention to it. Don't just dismiss it. Mm -hmm. So in other words, no shortcuts. No. As David said to me yesterday, you have to commit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have to commit, yeah. So, uh, like yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ekapada Bakasana. Ekapada Bakasana. I think this is the, I think this is the hardest arm balance. Ekapada Bakasana A. A, yes. Yeah, B is, B is like, oh, thank God. But yeah. A is, uh, it's a really challenging one. So, I, I won't talk when I do this one, that's for sure. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Wow, your arms are very straight and your knee is very high. Yeah. It, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of what I've managed to teach myself in this one. It took a long time. Um, so how have you been progressing in this posture? Because what I'm noticing with myself is that my arm is basically like some, yes. oh, my, my knee is halfway yeah. down. And that's how the, the moment I was given this pose, as I'm sure you remember, and then I remember David saying, now lift your head up. And I was like, lift where? Into what? There was nothing. And then eventually you start just figuring out any way to lift, which is really important because you're actually, without realizing, teaching yourself all of these connections. Mm. 
And so you just lift, you keep the elbows bent, the knee isn't in your armpit, it's somewhere on your tricep. And the idea is that you just lift, even if your head comes off that much and you're able to hold it for five very quick breaths, you know, the breathing changes, that counts as good enough. Mm. And you move past it. And then you're given all of these other poses, again, slowly. But over the years of repetitive, um, repetitiveness of this nature, of this practice, I built the strength to be mm. able to lift. Maybe it started happening two years ago, this kind of uh, lift. Which isn't that different when you think about bakasana, you know, when you're doing it in primary series as part of your transitions out of bujapadasana or suptakramasana. At first, it's a really like not, you know, David always jokes like not Instagram worthy. It's arms are bent and the knees are really low. And eventually you build your way up to having straight arms and your knees high in your armpit. It's the same, same for this. And what about the bandhas here? What yeah. about the bandha work? It's like, um, so different poses require different kind of bandha um, strength. And this one is kind of at its ultimate high. So meaning that as I'm sitting, I'm pulling on my kegels and that also engages my lower belly. Yes. And so it's all rolling in and I'm pulling so much up, but I have to breathe, you know? So one of the good exercises, just if, you, if you're having a hard time accessing your bandha and the core strength, is if you lie on the floor and you totally relax, you totally relax, and then you imagine you have to hold your pee so badly and you pull up. And you pull up and you hold for five seconds and then you let go. And then you do that a few mm. times and then you start to build. Go one, a little bit, two, pull more, three, and so on. And so you begin to see how your bandha strength differs all the time. It doesn't need to be at, but you got to be able to breathe. Mm -hmm. And so this one is like, if it's from a scale of one to 10, this one's at 10. Yeah. It's really, really important. Again, in the setup of it, you can, um, I'll break up, I'll break down the setup. But again, we're doing that tailbone tuck and bringing the knee as high in as possible. So this has to happen. Again, we're not trying to lift in any kind of a arched position, at least not for the version that we do in, in mm -hmm. Ashtanga. So, and uh, what about the leg that, you, that is up in the air? Is it a very active leg? Yes. Yeah. The more you can activate that leg, the more it stays connected to the rest of your body. If you bend the knee or you just kind of let it stay loose, uh, it's not gonna help you lift. It's gonna be like this wild card, you know? wild limb of your body that's just mm. moving around so keeping it straight and actually spinning it in a little bit to bring it back to the neutral position so the tendency will be for the leg to want to go something like that you want to point the feet to find strength and then spin the leg in so that it's nice and straight or as straight as it can be so that it stays connected to the hip and then mm -hmm. the rest of the body yeah. so again in the setup here my fingertips are pointing out a little bit and I find, make sure that I can press through them. The head comes down and you want here to have 90 degrees more or less. And so here, when I lift up, again, I don't lift into relaxed. I try to find the work here. And so my belly is pulled in and my tailbone is tucking under. And so as I go down, I slide my leg down my leg I come here so this is usually where we start right mm. here and then we try to lift but by keeping this leg that's extended engaged I can kind of have more control over my body and then in time you start lifting and pushing more okay so the back leg is just as important yes yeah and then here Really, so much of it is similar work. Similar work. It just keeps getting more and more intense. Mm. And so, yeah, it is okay to, the same way when you're, when you're learning bakasana, you never learn this from day one. You learn here somewhere, right? Where you start to negotiate of tipping the weight forward so that the legs come in. Yes. And so that your knee 
is resting on your upper arm. Mm. In the final version of Vakasana and Ekapada Vakasana, it's not, it's there and it's not really resting. Maybe 10% of it is resting and then everything else mm. is strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do the next one. Next one, much easier. <laughs> um, Ekapada Vakasana B. So again here, I take time with the setup. So from here, I start pulling my knees apart, but I tuck the tailbone under and see how much I curve to bring my shins as close to my armpit as possible. And then this leg extends and then tip the weight back. And here, now I'm pushing the floor away to lift. One, two, three, four, five. We come back up. Nice and strong, and then again, feet stay together. Pull the belly in, let the knees come apart. Tuck in as much as you can, extend, bum down, and then push the floor away. One, two, three, four, five. Here. Come back up, and then with control, Okay, so what I'm thinking here is um, when you are lowering down, again you are tucking the tailbone and then you are rounding your back and then you're coming down with your hips and you're extending one leg. So is the leg going straight forward or is it supposed to be up a little bit and hips are coming down? Because sometimes I see this asana being performed in various ways. Yeah, the... Or it doesn't really matter. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm not the authority yeah. on it. The way I've been doing it is the way David has been doing it and he hasn't been called out for it. He's, I mean, we were just in Mysore. And so, yeah, I've seen different versions of it, I think. It doesn't seem like Shrat's necessarily particularly picky yeah. about that. So it's nice the higher the extended leg can be up and as close to the shoulder. I mean, it takes a lot of flexibility at that point too. It's nice and then um, this is my version. I think either of the versions, it's the same work yeah. of getting into it. Like whether you drop the bum down a little bit more and then the leg comes up. That's, uh, I don't think that's any easier or harder than okay. this. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you would like to point out with this specific uh, posture? No, I think it's, this one's like, again, by the time, you know, once you get this pose, you're all happy. And, and sometimes in our head, it doesn't make sense. Like how can all of these poses before it, they, they were harder, I think. They required so much work. But some of the stuff, you know, like as you're working, it takes you into depth of it, and then it slowly also takes mm -hmm. you out of it and so I think this is kind of it's starting to calm you down like a uh, kapada bakasanae being the, the the pipe or the peak of it mm -hmm. okay thank you so much. so much thank, thank you. you thanks